All right. Hello, everyone. We are doing our presentation on the symbolic frame. My name is Sarah Amos, and we also have Ginny Ku, Brian Ramirez, and Denisha Turner. In our presentation, we will discuss and define the symbolic frame. We will review specific symbols and organizations, describe the symbolic frame that relates to course material, and then am analyze the symbolic frame at UMKC. Now I'll pass it off to Denisha. Thank you, Sarah. So I am Denisha Turner, and I'm just gonna, gonna give you the basic uh, principles of the symbolic frame. So this frame focuses on how we make sense of our world, essentially how we cope with the mysteries of life. We have to remember that these are intangible things that kind of shape our thoughts, emotions, and actions. Next slide, please. So the role of the leader in this frame, they are continuously evaluating and confronting like basic questions. Though you must remember that these questions aren't ever truly resolved. And some of these questions are, who are we? Like, uh, what are we here to do? And also how should we go about doing it? And to highlight some of the central tenets, they are meaning, faith, and belief. And I think a takeaway from one of these tenets is that meaning is not given to us. We have to create that meaning and also, um, the creative symbols, which my partners will talk about later, they kind of help us cope with our faith and our beliefs. Next slide, please. So here are the core assumptions of the frame. I'm not going to read them verbatim, but I think some important takeaways of these assumptions are activities and meanings are loosely coupled and that people create symbols to resolve confusion. And I also think it's important to highlight that the culture forms the super glue that bonds our organization. And my partner, Brian, will kind of get into the symbols in the organization. Thank you, Denisha. This is Brian Ramirez. And right now I'll be talking about the symbols in the organization. And these include myths, vision, and values, as well as the theater, which can include the stories and the fairy tales that um, theater can include, and lastly, rituals and ceremonies. All right, myths, vision, and values. So myths are referred as the story behind the story. And this story um, can explain, express, legitimize, and even maintain solidarity and, co and cohesion within that story. So when I think of myths, I sometimes think of, you know, that childhood memory that you have. You know, sometimes um, we, our grandparents told us, or our parents told us, hey, if you eat that watermelon um, seed, there's gonna be a plant that grows inside your stomach. And, you know, we grew up believing that. As well as here at UNKC, you know, we have the Epperson House and people have said the Epperson House is haunted within the student body. And this myth has continued within the UNKC spirit by students telling that story over and over again. And again, it's the story behind the story. Do we know if it's true? Who knows if it's haunted, right? <laughs> um, the next one is vision. Uh, visions help determine how the organization will, will work towards the future objectives and goals. So for example, UNKC has the vision um, that it's an urban university. Um, also within their vision, you know, they, they, they strive to have that um, health science emphasis and also the conservatory within the music and um, performing arts. And they're working towards that goal that they have. And lastly, the values. Um, are, the values are also the intangible, not material, but the intangible stuff that help define the unique characteristics that help drive and start the feelings that make someone at the, or an organization feel special about what they do. So again, here at UNKC, you know, we strive to have a diverse population and, and a diverse education. And there are several, several characteristics that UNKC is doing to help strive that value that we have. Next, um, I would like to give an example from the book. The book talked about the origin of the post-it note. Uh, you know, the post-it note just it wasn't something they sat at a table and said, this is exactly how it's going to be. Actually, the, the post-it note was a failed prototype. You know, they were actually making a 3D, I mean, a 3M tape. And within that um, creation, it failed and it wasn't as sticky. However, they noticed that when they put it to paper, um, it was sticking well on two services and paper. So they said, hey, this could actually work for something. So again, they, re they re-envisioned that, that idea. Um, and lastly, again, you know, when this kind of reminds me when life give you, gives you lemons, you know, make lemonade. And I believe that's what um, the myths, vision, and values try to conclude, you know, just trying to make the best of what's going on. Thank you. 
Hi guys, my name is Jenny Koo and I'll be following up with Brian. Um, I'm going to be talking about theater stories and fairy tales. Uh, stories work as mediums to communicate the different myths of an institution. Um, these stories are able to convey information, morals, and myths vividly and convincingly. Um, I know that when we think of myths, we might think of historical figures or religious figures, but this can also be applied to modern, modern organizations. Um, there is a quote in the book by CEO of Armstrong International that says, through storytelling, our people can know very clearly what the company believes in and what needs to be done. And I'll give an example from the book as well that clearly shows that this is actually um, a symbol for companies. So in the book, we have the example of an annual banquet. And in the banquet, there is one of the executives and the executive is talking and introducing all his peers and he forgets to mention the chairman. And in response to that, he's like, Oh, of course, our esteemed chairman of the board, Dr. Fry, excuse me, Dr. Fry, my secretary left your name off the list when he is told that he has forgotten the name. The chairman turns to his CEO and tells him that wants that executive fired. Later on, after the annual banquet, all the employees start talking about what happened and this reiterates the culture of the company and it shows that through storytelling, they're reinforcing the values and the culture that they have within the organization. Can we move on to the next slide? Also, um, there is a list of functions of stories by Steve Denning. Steve Denning is a Australian author that has focused a lot of his books on mostly business. One of his books um, is named Leader's Guide to Storytelling. So he's more focused on what our symbol is. And he says that some of those functions are sparking action, communicating who you are, communicating who the company is, transmitting values, fostering collaboration, taming the grapevine, sharing knowledge, and leading people into the future. Uh, through the example I gave previously, we can clearly see that they are transmitting values through storytelling and that's all on that. Thank you. Now I'm going to discuss rituals and ceremonies. Um, first, rituals, they are a routine that has a stateable purpose, but one that is invariably alludes to more than it says. So a ritual adds structure and meaning into a daily life. And an example of a ritual would be drinking your morning coffee. So that is part of your routine, but it's more than just a routine. For some people, drinking morning coffee is a way to de-stress and wake up in the morning, and it adds meaning to their mornings. Um, it's also discussed in the book by the authors that a loss of rituals leads to a loss of civilization, is the way they put it, and that reminded me of the COVID-19 pandemic when loss of um, a lot of different people's rituals in their daily lives due to closings because of COVID led to some mental health issues, more conflict, and overall it was just um, a darkness part of the world. And so rituals really do add meaning to our daily lives and add to our faith. Um, the other part is ceremonies, which are consisted of multiple rituals within itself, and they're more elaborate than a ritual. Uh, the four roles of ceremonies play in organizations, are to socialize, stabilize, reassure, and convey messages to the audience. Um, in terms of ceremonies that are more common, they usually take place around times of endings or retirements, transitions, celebrations, welcoming events. And some of the most important ones in higher education are graduation ceremonies or convocation ceremonies for new students. Obviously, these can deepen faith in organizations, but they can also have some negative connotations. So some people avoid ritual and ceremonies due to them blocking new ideas and new innovations. So they're not wanting to stick to the tradition and not being innovative. Um, or some have negative behaviors that can become rituals. So an example of that that I think of is in a fraternity or sorority, a ritual can be um, a hazing situation. And while that is a ritual and a tradition for that organization, it's not necessarily a positive behavior for an organization. 
Okay, now I am going to talk about some of the symbolic frames and how they connect to our um, class material. So first off, we have myths, visions, and values. Um, I'm taking this quote directly from the book. It says the myth, visions, and values are what inspire an organization to have purpose and resolve a previous mistake into a situation slash product. Uh, we can directly connect this to strategic planning since strategic planning is basically reviewing institutional vision, mission, and values. They formulate goals, create strategic objectives and action plans, and align action steps based on institutional values and mission. Uh, the next one is theater, story, and fairy tales. As I mentioned, through storytelling, our people can know very clearly what the company believes in and what needs to be done. We can connect this to a personal online presence. In the chapter on communication, um, it mentions that leaders can frame their own story. And through this story, of course, culture is gonna change within an organization. The next one is rituals and ceremonies. Um, going back from what Sarah said, she said, when individuals lose rituals, you lose the sense of civilization. Also, she mentioned that some rituals and ceremonies can be avoided because they can, um, they can block or they might push back on innovation. And we can see this through some material that we have seen on the book, which is preparing to address higher education trends. The American system of higher education is built on tradition. And although there is necessary um, need of transforming it, it can be difficult because of past success and a grip of familiar forms. So we can see how higher education um, it is being a little bit stalled back from rituals and ceremonies because we are afraid that through change, we might not be as successful as we used to be back in the days. Um, that's all on symbolic. Awesome. Now we wanted to kind of relate the symbolic frame to UMKC. So when I first read the symbolic frame, I wasn't really sure how this connected into my work at UMKC, but once I learned more about the different aspects of symbolic frame, I really thought it connected well to UMKC in general. So one, UMKC has a big emphasis on our vision, and Brian discussed what myths, vision, and values are, but the UMKC vision says that we aspire to be an exemplary public research institution, pursuing an excellence as human-centric learning and di discovery community, fostering equity, diversity, inclusion to enrich the lives of people and regions we serve. And if you have worked at UMKC or obviously you're a student here, you can see these this vision reflected in all of the activities at the university. And so I think they really focus on that part of this symbolic frame. Also, in terms of what Jenny discussed with theater and stories, we have passed down stories at UMKC. An example of one is the fact that Walt Disney designed one of our kangaroo mascots at UMKC. And while this is a historical story that you can see on the website and you can read in different places at UMKC, it just adds meaning to the organization and adds a sense of pride. We also have many ceremonies here that enhance the student experience. So one, we are having on Monday, there's going to be a revealing of a new Ruth statue. And that is a, an area, a good luck charm for students and a place to gather on campus and build your school spirit, which is a, going to be an interesting ceremony. Uh, last week, I was part of coordinating court warming, which is a tradition that increases pride in athletics, generally on a normal year, and pride in the school. We also see our convocation and pinning ceremonies. So as I mentioned, ceremonies can usually signify the beginning of something new, and convocation is a ceremony that celebrates new students at UMKC. And then their pinning is a ritual within convocation where students can attach a kangaroo pin to their clothing, and it signifies that they are now a real. And we also have graduation, and obviously graduation is important in celebrating the end of a era and an end of era for students and a big celebration for them and all of their achievements. And we at UMKC make a big effort to have a good graduation. Obviously last year we couldn't have it, but they still made an effort to have a great graduation for those students this year at Kauffman Stadium. And now I will pass it off to Denisha to talk a little bit about symbolic frame in the UM system. Thank you, Sarah. 
So I had to think really hard about relating this back to the UM system, but I think Chancellor Choi was a um, great way to do this. So learning about the symbolic frame, as I just mentioned, I thought Chancellor Choi would be a good example of evaluating a leader um, working within the symbolic frame. So let's kind of refer back to the idea that I mentioned earlier of the role of the leader as they continuously evaluate and confront basic questions. Um, specifically in this time of the pandemic, I can imagine that Chancellor uh, Choi had to really think about those questions of like who we are, what we are here to do and how we should be doing it um, just due to this, let's call it unique nature of um, obtaining education. And so I think that his role is extremely complex as he is a very visible symbol of UMKC and he also has to continue to communicate and relay the values and culture of this system of UMKC and of the other schools of the system. So I thought that he would be a good example of a leader um, working within a symbolic frame. Next slide, please, Sarah. So this is the end of our presentation. We hope that you have enjoyed it. We hope that you have enjoyed learning about the symbolic frame. Teammates, do you have anything to add? No, just if you have any questions from our presentation, you can comment them on the discussion board and we'll be looking to answer any questions that you might have. And here are our references.